Welcome back to the Micro Hydro Series. It's been four months since I've worked on this. I had a, a minor technical issue here. Let me grab this. Ugh, there we go. Oh, it's getting me wet already. That's what she said. Uh, so I had a minor issue where this clear hose, which is great for video, but poor for structure, it blew out when it got warmer. So it didn't work in the summer. And by that point, the, the flow of the spring that's up the hill that feeds the water for this, the flow had decreased enough that I can't get usable power out of it. I can't even get it to spin up fast enough to get the right voltage with a, a tiny, tiny nozzle that will maintain the pressure and the velocity, but there's not a volume to spin it uh, against the friction of the bearings, the fan, the magnets, uh, that sort of stuff. So we're back today because I got some new hose from McMaster Car. This is inch and a half, 200 PSI air hose. Should work just fine for water. If not, I guess I'll be replacing this again, but I, I think it'll be fine. For those wondering, this is part of a wireless microphone here. And the, the wind deflector here pops off real easy. So I 3D printed a harness. I guess we'll call it a harness to keep that cat on because it's called a dead cat because it looks like just a ball of fur. So it's a dead cat harness. Uh, I 3D printed this. I designed this myself. If you're interested in buying one, I guess maybe I'll put some up on Etsy. I have an Etsy channel called Assorted Joe and they'll be up there and we'll see if I sell any. Get this out of the way. I had this set up in a temporary fashion with the spring water going into a garden hose directly. And this was to help water my garden or fill up the hot tub or fill up the kiddie pool in the summer. The flow was too low to produce power, but still two to three gallons per minute is enough to fill things slowly. I currently have this hose filling up a duck pond that's up the creek, but I think our flow in the creek has increased to the point where I can take this off. And I'll need to because the configuration is a little bit goofy if I wanted to keep this on. So first I turn the water off from the spring. The spring is 270 feet above this point vertical and about 800 feet away. And I have a helper here. We don't have a name for her. So if you have any name suggestions, put them down below. So I shut this off. There shouldn't be any pressure in this line except up to the, the pond about 20 feet or 10 feet of head. So I should be able to open this and it won't gush at me too bad. I'll just kind of drain out slowly. I have the, the valve up there mostly shut. So it's just letting in a little bit of air to let this drain out. First, I'm gonna shut this uh, off. There we go. So that when I turn it on, it don't have an accident. And then these fittings are called sanitary fittings. There's a little bit of rust in there. I'll have a link to these in the description of the video. They're 1.5 inch sanitary fittings, also called tri-clamps because of the original company that came up with these was tri-clover, I think. So I'm gonna try hooking this up first and then replacing the hose in situ. The way these work is there's a washer they come in different types for different material or liquid uses. Uh, some are silicone, some are uh, more of a hard plastic, but these are just silicone. I put the silicone in there, bring this up. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of memory in the hose. It doesn't quite want to go back because it's a little bit cooler out right now. It's uh, 40, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I like to have these all point in the same way. Sorry, my hand's blocking it, but there's nothing really I can do about that. I want the knob to come up. So. Uh, 
There we go. Normally they're not so hard to put on, but it's just a little bit cool out and the hoses are stiff and there's a lot of weight on them. I chose these fittings specifically because I can very quickly change the entire system configuration. Or if, for example, I discover that I need bends, like down there I put some bends in, I can very quickly and easily just add them on. And let's not lose the nuts. Take this off of here. These fittings have some barbs in them. And even though this hose expanded, they, uh, they want to stick on there really well. So I have to cut them off instead of trying to fight with it. Now, this is a lot easier if there's not a whole bunch of junk on it. Did you guys see that? Pretty sure that these won't fit through that nozzle. Also, I need to get a cover for the collection barrel at the top to prevent debris from getting in. Remember, always cut away from you. First, I'm gonna put on this elbow. Oh, that slips in real easy, that's good. I was concerned that it might just be a pain in the butt, but it's not, so that's all right in my book. All right, uh, put this right in the middle of the barbs, about there. And that should be good for 100 and 20 PSI that I get out of it. <clears throat> so now I'm going to hook up this end of it. And then I'll be able to rotate the whole thing up. Okay. This rubber is a lot softer than that vinyl hose. So now I, I have a good location for this that goes right in here. And then this is a, a tubing cutter. I'll have a link in the description. I got this one at Home Depot, but I'll find a probably an, an, probably an identical one to put on the description. I put it in here. I give a little rotation because it's the hose is a little bit too big. And when I rotate it, that slices the knife into it, just perfect. And I give that a, a cut through. And there's one little string holding it, there we go. And now, put our band on and I try to keep everything oriented in the same direction here. Stick that guy on, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, good, I like it. I don't have the other end of these hooked up to anything right now. So I'm just gonna tape these off to the side so we can power it up. There we go, though. 
They won't drop in the water. You can't touch the wires because there's the Wago lever nuts on them. So that, that should be good. What I'm gonna do ultimately is put some MC4 connectors on here that are good for solar panels. And I already have those on hand. I just left these in here all summer. Got some good sun on it right now. Come on. There we go. I, I should have checked that for an acorn to be jammed in it. Hey, no acorns, I don't think. Well, no, they, they're a little bit too big. They wouldn't fit. I'm gonna loosen these to rotate this up. All right, make sure everything's snug. Off, off, off. You know what I didn't do? I didn't have this in the pit when I put this hose on. So it's short. It's short by a little bit, maybe. Let's see if I can spin that down. Valves are off, wires are off, those are tight. Let me turn the water back on. Okay, I guess these clamps have to be tighter. Okay, let's try it again, but also this time slower. There. Is that slow enough? It's working. I'll give these another ooga dooga. There, now those surely won't come off. They're not touching each other. It can't fall in the water unless it blows off. So we're at, uh, you guys might have a little parallax error, but I'm right at, um, let's see, that's one, ten, two, four, six, eight. So each one is two, so that's at 116 PSI. And I'll turn it back on. Now I have a small, I must have a small nozzle on there or there's a clog and that's why it's not spinning up all the way. Let's try this one. Oh, I know. because the valve, because the valve here is not open all the way. Okay, let's try it again. And here's a good example of a serious problem that I have with this system. If I have both jets open, then let's see, that one's a clean jet and this one, it looks like there's mostly a clean jet. If I have both jets open, or if I have, when I have four jets, if I have four jets open, 
it'll outstrip the supply of water from the spring. So what I have to do is run on fewer or and or smaller jets. So if I shut off this jet, we're gonna see how the pressure, I, I hope, will climb over the next few minutes because we're only running on one jet now. Okay, it seems like the pressure isn't really increasing much. I'm gonna shut off the other valve and let it fill up. In the near future, I'm planning on running some thicker wire in for this. Why isn't it going? Go in there. Huh. There we go, finally. I reconnected the wiring. Focus you, frack. I reconnected the wiring coming through the wall. I just, I was able to discard about 40 or 50 feet of wire in that way. Previously I had it running under my garage door. But I am gonna upgrade that wire to a fatter wire in the near future. And just as a refresher, that's three phase AC, which goes up to a three phase AC to DC bridge rectifier which then goes to my Midnight Classic charge controller, which interfaces the battery and my load center through a Victron battery protect. And that's connected to two 12 volt lead acid batteries in parallel. I've got a little bit of insulation here. I have two inverters hooked up to it. Sorry, I just moved all this to the freezer because the bench I had here was in the way for the wires. And that goes to either a 300 watt Morningstar pure sine wave inverter or that down there. So now I'm gonna go turn the turbine on. While I have the other camera going on in the house, I can get this working. Uh, maybe my microphone will even connect because it's only about, well, it's on the other side of that wall right there. It's not that far away. My microphone might be working. So we're back up to full pressure. I presume that the barrel's full because we have quite a bit of flow now. And I'm going to try opening, I think that's the better uh, nozzle right now. That one's not, it doesn't put out as much of a nice stream. So we're going to try turning this on and we'll see what it does. All right, that barely spun up. You can hear it's barely spinning. I think I remember why. Oh wait. <laughs> nope, I'm dumb. Here. That's why. Because I was pressure testing. Yeah, there it's going. I put on a new... I put on this other hose, so I was pressure testing that too. Hey, we're back up to full pressure or full dynamic pressure. Notice we only lose about two and a half PSI there. Uh, dynamic pressure when we have the one nozzle going. 
And the important thing about that is you don't want to lose too much dynamic pressure to it flowing through a restrictive pipe. In my case, I've sized my pipe so I only lose a few percent. Even at full power, I think 5% at full power. I had one Wago connector die on me. So we'll go inside and see what that looks like. All right, that's not bad. So clearly I have to set time date. Okay. Good. Yes. Our voltage in is good. Our battery voltage is good. We're putting 17 amps into it. That's 250 watts. We'll see if it maintains that for a long period of time. I doubt that it will because I doubt that I have enough water. Most of the time during the winter, I could average like 150 watts. Okay, now I'm losing water. So we're bouncing below 200 watts. Volts is the same, amps is decreasing. Even though our battery voltage is low enough that we're in bulk MPPT mode. So this will keep decreasing until the pressure is no longer able to squeeze more water through that nozzle, thus reaching a steady state. I apologize for the shaky camera. I just carried up a heavy load, so I didn't bring anything else with me. I just had my cell phone with me. And the heavy load was, I can show you here, it's a concrete cap for this barrel that uh, a guy I helped over the summer, he made this for me because he has a concrete business of sorts. So previously I had that metal cover on there with some rocks and just got some holes in it. And I was getting a lot of acorns down down the penstock somehow. I don't know how they would get through the holes that are drilled in the bottom of that pipe. I don't know where the acorns were getting in, but they thoroughly clogged up my uh, my system at the bottom. Just the, just the valves. So I was able to flush those out pretty easy. So I'm gonna put this on here. It's got a, oh, it's heavy. It's probably about 45 pounds. It's 24 inches diameter. It has a lip around the edge that should locate it on the barrel. For anybody wondering, this is the source of my water for the hydroelectric system. There's a spring that comes out the hill up there and the water just goes into a collection weir down through this three inch pipe. And it's a variable flow between one and 60 gallons per minute, depending on the weather and the season. Right now, this is probably around two or three gallons per minute if I'd have to guess. And I am consuming a little bit of it, but the rest of it is flowing out, this overflow here. And I do plan on putting a proper overflow on this. So squirrels may have been putting stuff through that hole too. I don't know, could have been chipmunks even. My collection weir is not perfect. That's the stuff that gets through. You can see it dripping a little bit there. So that's not too bad. All right, let's put this on. All right, there we go. That'll prevent debris from getting in the barrel and affecting my hydroelectric system here. It did take me about a half hour to bring it up here. It usually takes me about 15 minutes to walk up, so I just take a lot of breaks because that's heavy. One thing I am slightly concerned about is that if some nefarious person comes up here and sees a round thing that they'll want to roll it down the hill. I, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope if it does happen that a tree would stop it before it runs through the wall of my house. So there's that. And here we are about a week later. I have also been working on some smaller nozzles. You can't really see it there because, well there, you can see it. I've been trying to take advantage of this lower flow that I have right now because we've had a really dry summer and fall and I just don't have a whole lot of water flowing right now. So like I have that one nozzle on, it flows maybe two gallons per minute by my calculations. 
I should actually measure it with a bucket and a stopwatch. But I'm already draining the supply of water with that nozzle that only flows two gallons per minute. So normally it'd be up there at 117 PSI, but it's down, it's already decreasing. And even if, when it was full, that alone is not enough to power the charge controller. The charge controller will actually use more power to operate than this can put out. So it's a, a net loss, unfortunately. All right, well, that's where I am for now. I'm gonna maybe do a video on uh, the smaller nozzles soon. Like, comment, subscribe. I have a bunch of other links down below. Check them out. See you around. Bye.